It is Crossover Thursday all across the Locked On Podcast Network, and I cross it over with Locked On Seahawks host Corbin Smith as we break down Russell Wilson's big return to Seattle Monday Night Football. We take a look at key matchups to watch in this game, and we also pose the question, what do these teams need to do respectively in order to come out on top with a victory on Monday Night Football? You get that much more on today's brand new episode, Locked On Broncos. You are Locked On Broncos. Your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings, 12s and Broncos country. It's time for our first Locked On Crossover Thursday special of the 2022 season. I'm Corbin Smith of Locked On Seahawks. Joining me for our first crossover, Cody Rourke of Locked On Broncos we got a kind of big matchup coming up on Monday Night Football, and I don't know what the main storyline is going into this game at Lumen Field. What could it possibly be? <laughs> well, you know, I think that there's a certain guy that used to, you know, represent 12 Nation, and that was uh, Russell Wilson making his return to where it all began with the Seattle Seahawks. But he's wearing a different colored jersey, and he's facing his former team. And it's on primetime football. I mean, what more could you ask for? Yeah, this really is, in my belief, one of the three biggest games in Seahawks history. And I know that some fans are scoffing at that idea because they've had three NFC Championship games that have netted Super Bowl berths. But this is an unprecedented contest. We're going to have plenty of time to dive into that. Russell Wilson returning to Seattle. This crossover episode is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com and the promo code locked on as we've already hinted at there's a lot of storylines that we could dive into but really there's going to be one storyline that is going to dominate the headlines we're already seeing it again this morning with Russell Wilson leaving Seattle at his first game with the Denver Broncos this is truly unprecedented I can't remember a time where a quarterback of Wilson's stature and his iconic nature going to play his former team in his first game with his new team, and it's on Monday night football in prime time. This has never happened before. It truly is a one-of-one situation. And while the story for, I think, both the Seahawks and the Broncos is relatively the same with Russ's return, I definitely think there's some different optics, I think, for both sides and how it goes. You know, I think for the locked-on Broncos perspective side of things, the biggest story for Denver with Russell Wilson going back home to Seattle, there's been a lot of questions. He's mentioned he doesn't get nervous, and I think Broncos country wants to know – for Russ, will the emotion of his return, what will the reception be like? Will will the 12s boo him or will they cheer him? There seems to be a split in the fan base, especially some of the YouTube comments that we've gotten. There's Seahawks fans that love Russ and wish him nothing but the best. And there's some that just like, ah, boo this man, can't stand him. That to me, I think is going to be a big dynamic, but more so, how does it impact Russell Wilson and the Broncos offense? I think that'll be a huge key because the starters and Russ didn't play a single snap in the NFL preseason Broncos head coach Nathaniel Hackett was a big believer on not playing his starters. And to be honest with you, I do not blame him. I don't think that you want to risk, especially if you have ambitions of being a Super Bowl contender. I don't think you want to risk maybe, you know, your starters or key players getting hurt in a meaningless preseason game. So this will be the first game action that we have seen from Russell Wilson in Nathaniel Hackett's offense in a Denver Broncos uniform against a Seattle Seahawks defense that has a multitude of big names on it. And the big question, I think, from the Broncos perspective is, is that Seahawks defense going to be much more improved than what it has been the last couple of years? To me, I'm excited to see how Russ maybe challenges some of his former teammates. And I'm looking at the gum-chewing champion on the sideline for the Seahawks, Pete Carroll, from a locked-on Seahawks perspective. Him going up against Russell Wilson, first time that they are foes. And this is not unprecedented. There have been a few times in past NFL history where defensive-minded head coaches that had great success for a long time with a star quarterback have gotten to face that quarterback. And some of them are not Hall of Fame caliber players, but you got your Donovan McNabbs. And you've got Carson Palmer. And then way back in the day, Joe Montana going up against the 49ers. I mean, there are a number of instances. We've seen Bill Belichick against Tom Brady last year, most recently, 
where defensive minded coaches have gotten to face their former quarterback and the quarterbacks gotten the last laugh most of these times. And those five games I just mentioned quarterbacks being four and one at the same time, though, Tom Brady didn't play well in that game in Foxborough last year. Bill Belichick had a master plan assembled and held them to 19 points. If not for a missed field goal at the end of the game, the Patriots would have won with rookie quarterback, Mac Jones. So I'm really curious to see who has the advantage in that matchup there, because nobody knows Russell Wilson better than Pete Carroll being his head coach the last 10 years, obviously viewed as one of the best defensive coaches in the NFL. And he's got some rookies. He's going to be thrown into the lineup. He's got some proven stars like Jamal Adams and Quandre Diggs at safety. Jordan Brooks, up-and-coming potential all-pro linebacker in the middle. He likes some of the edge rushers that they've got, some young players like Daryl Taylor. So he's got the pieces in place. Is he going to be able to put together a master plan, knowing Russell Wilson's strengths and weaknesses, that helps negate many of the things that Russ does well? Or is this going to be a case where, you know what, yeah, you know me, but if you're Russell Wilson, I know you really well, Pete Carroll, and I know what you like to do defensively, and maybe that plays into the quarterback's hands. So I'm really curious to see how that plays out, especially with Russ playing with a brand new head coach and a new offense for the first time, as you mentioned. That'll be a huge key, I think, for both sides. And I think the storylines, the key matchups that kind of present itself, I think will make this game a little bit more intriguing, especially in a loud atmosphere that we know the 12th man brings in Seattle. That's going to certainly be one of the other storylines. You mentioned the crowd, how they respond. Russell Wilson actually had a video played at the Storm WNBA game last month, and there were a lot of boo birds at a WNBA game. So just imagine what the 12s are going to be doing at Lumen Field. I, I don't think any of us know truly how the fans are going to react, but emotions are going to be running high for players, for coaches, and especially for the fans going into this primetime matchup. And speaking of matchups, we're going to get to a few key matchups to watch in this matchup between the Broncos and Seahawks coming up next here on our Crossover Thursday special. Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. With Turo, you can book any car you want, wherever you want it, from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget across the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. Book a spacious SUV or minivan for a family road trip. Get a classic or luxury car for a special event, birthday, or holiday. Find affordable economy cars if you're on a budget or just need to get from A to B. Test drive that new electric vehicle you've had your eye on to see how it fits into your everyday life. Many Turo hosts can even deliver the car right to you. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms and conditions and exclusions apply. Ditch boring rental cars and find your drive at Turo.com. You're listening to our first crossover Thursday special of the 2022 season here on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm Corbin Smith of Locked On Seahawks. Joining me for the show Locked on Broncos host Cody Rourke, Russell Wilson returning to his old stomping grounds, Lumen Field, in prime time. But there's a lot of other really good football players on both of these teams that are ultimately going to decide who gets the week one victory. So, Cody, let's start with the Broncos on offense. What is one matchup that you are highlighting going into this game that you think is going to have a great bearing on who gets the victory? Well, you know, I'm going to stick with the Russell Wilson route here for a little bit, but it's against his former teammates, and it's in that secondary there. And when we're talking about guys that you mentioned, Quandre Diggs, who I believe is one of the best ball-hawking safeties in the National Football League, I think he will pose a significant challenge to any team that the Seahawks face this upcoming season. But not only that, Jamal Adams and his presence to be able to play in the box, to be able to be a force player to run the alley, I think that is also an important dynamic, especially with Russell Wilson, who will probably look to scramble a little bit. So I imagine that probably have a game plan devised a little bit on to send some pressure there from Jamal Adams, maybe to a side that favors where Russell Wilson likes to roll out a little bit. To me, I think that'll be a huge one, but how does Russ test the ball downfield to guys like Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler, Albert Okuwebunam, Montreal Washington, potentially. Uh, you know, I think that the, the offensive opportunity is, is here for Denver, but these are some big questions because even Nathaniel Hackett even mentioned guys like Jamal Adams, Quandre Diggs, you have to know where those guys are at. And you mentioned Jordan Brooks, another one of those guys at the inside linebacker position. He could impact the game. So when you're trying to throw to the middle of the field, which I know a lot of Seahawks fans said Russ never really threw to the middle of the field. He's done a ton of that in the, in the training camp portions of this Broncos team. He's thrown it vertically. But I think that those guys right there will present a little bit of a dynamic. Can he fit it into specific windows? 
that'll make that a little bit more feasible. For me, that is the Broncos offensive matchup I'm looking forward to seeing. But Corbin, I have to ask you, when it comes to the Seattle Seahawks offense, what matchup are you looking forward to specifically? Well, Russell Wilson might not be in Seattle anymore. Geno Smith being the quarterback, but Geno Smith has two of the best receivers in the NFL at his disposal in DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. The issue is going to be that the Denver Broncos have two pretty darn good corners. Now, Ronald Darby has had kind of an up and down career. He's bounced around with a number of teams, but Patrick Sertan, the second, is one of the best young corners in the entire NFL going into the year number two. That was a player that I was told that the Seahawks briefly inquired about when they were trading Russell Wilson, and that got sent off to the side quickly. That was going to be a no discussion part of that trade. So Denver gets to keep him in their secondary, and they've got really good safety play as well. Geno Smith has arm talent. I'm not going to sit here and say that he's Russell Wilson because he's not. But he can get the ball downfield. He can deliver strikes to Metcalf and Lockett. And those two are a difficult matchup for any group of corners in the NFL, especially with Metcalf's size and his athleticism. You just don't see very many 6'3", 230-pound receivers that can move like he can. And so those two, they create their own matchup issues in their own way. The question is going to be, is Geno Smith going to be able to deliver the football to them, particularly with the corners that Denver has That is going to be a real back and forth matchup. And for Seattle to win this game, they're going to have to find a way to create a few of those explosive plays. This offense is not going to be built around pass explosives as it has in the past with Russell Wilson. But still, with the receiving talent they have, Metcalf and Lockett being two of their very best players, you've got to get the football to them downfield. Can Geno Smith do that against a Denver secondary that is loaded with talent? Now let's flip the script here. Denver Broncos on defense. What do you think are the most notable matchups or the most notable matchup for the Broncos defensively going to this game facing Seattle's offense? Well, you know, kind of going the opposite of your offensive one. You know, I think everyone's going to be looking at Patrick Sertan against DK Metcalf. But for me, outside of the most like evident must see pay-per-view type experience between those two guys, I'm going to go with the Randy Gregory, Bradley Chubb and Baron Browning, the Broncos, three edge rushers that will get a lot of rotation against Seattle against two of Seattle's from what a lot of Seahawks fans have been telling me in my YouTube comment section. They're going to be starting two rookie offensive tackles, obviously Charles Cross being one of them. And then you have another guy in the mix there. And then behind, I think the other tackle, there's Jake Curran as well, who's a second year player. So there's a lot of inexperience right now on that Seattle Seahawks offensive tackle position. I think that the Broncos should absolutely try to attack that a little bit, try to isolate some one-on-one matchups. And with a rotation of Bradley Chubb, who's fully healthy coming into the season, who's just named a team captain, is playing for a contract extension. Randy Gregory, one of the Broncos' key free agent offseason acquisitions coming over on a five-year deal, is ramping things up, and he looks unbelievably big and fast. And that could be a scary little posing you know, matchup for the Broncos to have with those two guys. Oh, and then there's Baron Browning, who started inside backer for them last year, but they moved him to edge rusher, and he had an absolutely dominant NFL preseason at that position. So the Broncos plan to send edge rushers and pass rushes in waves, according to Broncos head coach Nathaniel Hackett this season. And I think when you have two rookie offensive tackles, I think if you're the Broncos, if your defensive coordinator Zero Evro, you have to find a way to exploit that and try to attack that. Yeah, that is a scary matchup from a Seattle perspective, just because you are throwing two rookie tackles into the fire against really good pass rushers for the Denver Broncos. And Charles Cross and Abraham Lucas have had great preseasons, but the preseason is not the regular season. The real bullets start flying. It's a lot different tests that they're going to be facing rushing off the edge. I'm going to be echoing similar sentiments here. Now, Garrett Bowles obviously is an outstanding tackle, but you've got your question marks on the right side. Billy Turner's been injured, and so there's potentially going to be a backup playing in over there. And I think maybe the most overlooked position group on Seattle's roster going into this season, or at least a group that people aren't paying attention to, that maybe they should. The Seahawks have had a lot of trouble generating pressure on opposing quarterbacks the last few years. It feels like they've been playing musical chairs. But Daryl Taylor, this is really his second season. He missed his whole rookie year recovering from a broken leg. Last year was his pseudo-rookie season, had six and a half sacks. He looks primed to me to push for double-digit sacks and have a breakout season. He's explosive off the edge. He can win with speed. He also has underrated bull rushing and power moves. So if he can put the complete package together, which I think he is going to this year, 
that's going to be a real problem for whoever is playing right tackle for the Broncos. And Russell Wilson might have some heat in his face early. And on the other side, the Broncos know Chenna Nuosu, formerly of the Chargers, and he's a really good young player that it feels like still has not hit his ceiling. They love him in this 3-4 style defense that they're going to be running, a hybrid 3-4. And so both those guys, and even rookie Boye Mafe as a situational rusher, can be a real handful with his athleticism, his speed getting upfield. That trio of pass rushers going up against Denver's tackles, Garrett Bowles is one of the better ones in the business, but still, this is a very athletic edge rushing group that I believe has a great opportunity to put pressure and make life difficult on Russell Wilson to go with the crowd noise at Lumen Field. I think you make some great points there. And look, Boye Mafia was one of my draft crushes coming out of the 2022 NFL draft. And when he went to Seattle and I saw him get, you know, a couple, I believe he had a sack in one of the games I watched of the Seahawks in the preseason. Super athletic, being able to bend around the edge. And I think that is super important, especially when they're playing this hybrid 3-4 that I, to my understanding, Pete Carroll wanted to, kind of implement and replicate a little bit of a model of the Vic Fangio defense in terms of the shell look and maybe how they run things. So we'll see how that pays off. But I think those are some great matchups. And if these matchups come to the forefront on Monday Night Football, Corbin, I think we're going to have a very, very entertaining game for the masses, for the 12s and for Broncos country. Yeah, and I think going into this game, the national narrative, of course, with Russell Wilson being under center for Denver and Geno Smith being the quarterback for Seattle, I think that a lot of your national pundits are looking at this game thinking, this has a chance to get ugly early at Lumen Field. But I think you and I would both echo this sentiment a little bit. Seattle has talent away from the quarterback position. This is not one of those situations where they lost their quarterback and then they completely blew up the team. They've still got a lot of star power on both sides of the football. And of course, Denver has some positions that they'd still still like to upgrade here going to the next couple of seasons with Russell Wilson now being under contract. They're a team that feels like they are in the window to be a Super Bowl contender, but still have room to upgrade their roster. So week one's crazy. And week one, we've seen some really bad teams go in and win football games. You just never know what's going to happen. So keeping that in mind, This has a chance to be a very close game, even with those national narratives out there. What do the Denver Broncos need to do, rather than me asking for a score prediction going to this game? What do the Denver Broncos have to do to go to Lumen Field, one of the toughest road environments in the NFL? The fans are going to be especially hostile given the circumstances. What do the Broncos have to do to go in, take care of business, and get that week one primetime victory? Well, you know, I think the biggest challenge, you have to go in there and you have to tune out the noise. One of the loudest stadiums in the National Football League, the Broncos have been pumping in crowd noise in practice, the loud simulation. So they, you know, when Nathaniel Hackett's on the sideline calling plays, it, there's the real simulation of, hey, I can't hear sometimes because the volume's really loud. I anticipate it's going to be an electric atmosphere. Uh, and, and I think a lot of it is, can the Broncos overcome the emotion of Russell Wilson's return to Seattle? For the offense that hasn't taken any snaps in the preseason, can the offense get rolling? If the Broncos' offense can get rolling to the stature of what we saw when the Dallas Cowboys came in joint practices, Denver could get off to the races here, but for Denver, they have to protect the football. You can't put the ball into harm's way. And if you get a lead, you have to utilize the run game with Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams, with Javante expected to get the start defensively. If the Broncos are going to win this game, you have to limit the big play opportunities that we've seen DK Metcalf thrive in or Tyler Lockett getting behind defenses and over the course of his career, being able to do those types of things. If the Broncos can do that, limit those opportunities, they have a really good chance, but they also have to be able to plug against the run where they have struggled the last couple of years consistently especially on the interior that's why they brought in former Seattle Seahawks division rival DJ Jones and K1 Williams to help plug in the interior and also plug in the secondary as an extra run helper there if they can do that and limit Rashad Penny and maybe even DJ Homer a little bit I think that the Broncos have a good opportunity to win this game but I want to flip it around to you now Corbin if the Seattle Seahawks are going to come into this game where they are considered underdogs and upset the Denver Broncos in Russell Wilson's return home what do the Seahawks need to do I think there's a very specific blueprint and a lot of times that's how it is for an underdog there's a certain way a certain ingredient set of ingredients that you have to throw onto the field to win a game like this because Denver is the more talented team. I don't think the gap is that wide away from the quarterback position between these two teams. Like I said, I think Seattle's still got a lot of talent. You've got Metcalf, Lockett, Adams, Diggs, Brooks, 
Taylor has a chance to be a star rushing off the edge. I mean, there's a lot of talent on this roster. They got some rookies they really like. There's two rookie tackles. Tariq Woolen at corner, he's going to be tested a lot in his first NFL game going against Russell Wilson, but he's been extremely impressive up to this point. For them to win this game, though, not just hang with the Broncos, to win this game. On the defensive side of the football, Pete Carroll, Clint Hurt, defensive coordinator, you know Russell Wilson. You know his strengths. You know his weaknesses. First and foremost, you can't let him beat you with extended plays. you got to keep him boxed in. Don't let him get outside of the pocket so he can extend plays and then burn you downfield, something he did so many times to opposing defenses for the Seahawks. And that really lends itself into the other key, keep the receivers in front of you. And Quandre Diggs has been such a good center fielder at that free safety position that they haven't had to worry necessarily about that. But you're going to have potentially a rookie corner, maybe Michael Jackson, who hasn't played a lot of NFL games He's been on a roster for several years, but hasn't played many games, been a practice squad guy. Those could potentially be your two starting corners. So you got to protect them. And it's going to boil down to your play of Quandry Diggs. Do you have two deep safety looks? But you got to keep the receivers in front of you, limit those explosives, and limit Russell Wilson's ability to beat you with his legs improvising when plays break down. If they can do that on defense, they've got a chance to keep this within reach. On the offensive side of the football, they have to do everything they couldn't do last year. What I mean by that, you've got to be efficient on third down. You've got to be able to extend drives. The Seahawks stunk at both of those categories with or without Russell Wilson last year. They've got to find a way to sustain drives and chew clock, and they've got to be efficient when they get in the red zone. Don't settle for field goals. You've got to find ways to score a couple touchdowns if you get down there, either with the ground game or utilizing your tight ends. Noah Fant, a familiar, a familiar name for the Denver Broncos. Get him or Colby Parkinson involved down there. DK Metcalf should be a monster in the red zone as well. You have to punch it in when you get there. If they're efficient on third down and they're efficient in the red zone, and they sustain some lengthy drives to go with limiting explosives on defense. That's a lot of things they got to do, but when you're the underdog, that's the way it plays out. If they're able to check off most or all those boxes playing at home in front of the loud 12s, it gives the Seahawks a fighting chance to not only hang in this game, but win on Monday night football and pull off the upset. Well, you know, Corbin, let's recap here for viewers, listeners, watchers of Locked on Seahawks, Locked on Broncos. From a Locked on Broncos perspective, we've talked about Russell Wilson being the main storyline, returning to where it all began, to a team where he helped bring a Super Bowl to the forefront for the Seattle Seahawks. Various NFC Championship appearances, two Super Bowl appearances as well. But for the most part, the Broncos and Russell Wilson have to come in in their first snaps on the offensive side of the ball of the entire new league year. Can they get things rolling offensively? Can they establish the run early on with Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon? Can they play turnover-free football? Can they protect the football is a huge thing. And more importantly, can they protect Russell Wilson, which that's been one of the questions throughout his career, especially in Seattle. Corbin knows this as well. The amount of times that Russell Wilson was sacked. Sometimes he holds on to the ball a little too long, but that's part of his game. And can he overcome some of those things in a brand new offensive scheme against some familiar faces that do know a little bit about Russell Wilson and for the defensive side of the ball we're looking at key matchups with Randy Gregory Bradley Chubb Baron Browning against Seattle's rookie offensive tackles that's a key matchup that we have our eyes on as well with Russell Wilson trying to figure out how to target you know a secondary in the passing attack with Quandre Diggs and Jamal Adams that's the lockdown Broncos perspective to recap things for locked on Seahawks viewers or listeners Corbin what do we talk about as you mentioned, familiarity is going to be the main word going to this game. And as I hit on earlier in the show, Pete Carroll versus Russell Wilson. You've got the teacher versus the student here. First time that they have been foes for the last decade. They've been working together. They won a lot of football games. They won a Super Bowl for NFC West championships. They know each other inside and out. So the real question is, who has the advantage there, at least in the season opener? Maybe in this case, with Russell Wilson not having played any snaps for the Denver Broncos, maybe the advantage leans a little bit towards Pete Carroll. Or it might be one of those cases where, you know what, Russell Wilson knows Pete Carroll to a T. He knows what he wants to do defensively. He knows the players out there. He practiced against them. So he comes out roaring 180 mile an hour puts up a couple of quick touchdowns and suddenly this game gets out of hand. So that's the biggest storyline for the Seahawks going into this game. In my estimation, 
is can they find a way to neutralize Russell Wilson? How, how does Pete Carroll's knowledge, the knowledge from the defense in general that have played with Russell Wilson, that have practiced with them, who has the advantage there? Because that very well may tilt who ends up winning this football game. And from a matchup perspective, to me, the Seahawks on defense, they've got to find a way to get some pressure on Russell Wilson, limit his ability to extend plays. That's on Daryl Taylor, Uchenna Nuosu, and Boye Mafe going against Denver's tackles. Garrett Bowles is very good, but we don't know who's going to start a right tackle. And regardless, they're going to have to deal with Daryl Taylor, which that's going to be a problem for right tackles around the league this year. So if Seattle can get some pressure there on an offense, they can generate a few big plays from Geno Smith to DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. That gives them a very good shot to hang in this game and maybe pull off the Monday night football upset, which that certainly would ruin Russell Wilson's homecoming coming back to the Pacific Northwest. You can follow me on Twitter at Corbin Smith NFL. You can follow Cody at Cody Rourke NFL. Pretty simple uh, taglines there on Twitter. You can follow Locked on Seahawks and Locked on Broncos as well. We're streaming on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and streaming five days a week on YouTube. Everyone enjoy the game. Thanks for listening. Go Hawks, and let's ride for Broncos country.